Welcome back our audience all over the world. Today's presentation is on codes and standards as applicable to non-destructive testing. So I just want you I just want to introduce how the codes are applied and uh, this is the pre presentation the title and my name is Anmol Bering. So we will start now. Codes and standards actually they provide the rules and guidelines, definitions for uh, material selection, fabrication, as well as inspection. And these codes are developed by experts who meet regularly on an annual basis or maybe twice a year and review the codes and then they update them and revise them. So they are done on a regular basis. So this presentation is should be taken as an introduction to the codes and standards the specific for specific language you should refer to the actual code uh, all the what i'm saying is you can actually see the subtitles by clicking cc on the youtube video this is a brief a brief list of the codes and it goes by the industry so it depends what you are inspecting so if you are actually working on steel structures the applicable code will be D1.1 from the American Welding Society. So this is applicable to buildings, steel buildings, airport terminals, train stations, stadiums, you know, the, the steel structures portion of that building. If we are working on boilers, then the applicable code is ASME Boiler and Pressure Vessel Code Section 1. For pressure vessels, it's ASME boiler and pressure vessel code section 8 for power piping means the piping in a power plant it is asme b31.1 for process piping which is in the refineries and chemical plants that is b31.3 and for onshore pipelines it's api 1104 for offshore work it's mostly dnv osf 101 and for aerospace it goes by the individual companies uh, they make their own standards and they will provide all the information. So the code uh, codes will, first of all, they will provide you with the scope of inspection. For example, if radiography has to be done on welded structures, they will actually specify if all the welds have to be inspected or 10% or do we do only spot radiography. So all that information is given in the code and it actually goes by the, the level of stresses. Obviously, if the stress level is very high, more inspections will be required. The code will also provide you with the relevant entity methods and they will either include the entity methods which, uh, which are included in this D1.1 for ultrasonic testing and for radiography and also the codes will provide you with the calibration methodology for example for ultrasonic testing it will state whether to use notches or side drill holes and what is the size of the side drill hole to set up the sensitivity so uh, then at the end it will provide you with the acceptance criteria so once you are done with the inspection you find the discontinuity the code will actually specify and provide you with the size and so that a decision can be made whether the discontinuity is accepted or rejected and all that information is given here so i've given you some uh, so in d1.1 there are two sections which deal with uh, non uh, inspection it's section number eight and section number ten section ten pertains to the tubular structures so which is the tky and if you're doing TKY structures, then D1.1 requires additional personnel requirements which are given in section 10.29.2. And basically they want you to take a test on a mock-up and get a grade of 70% or higher on the practical test. For PT and MT, they basically refer you to the ASTM standards. So, here is what the D1.1 looks like, just to give you an idea. It's a huge book, and this is what it looks like. This one is the 2020 edition, which is right here. 
and uh, then we will go to the uh, section 8 pressure vessels and uh, for this one the extent of inspection is given here and for the entity methods for ASME codes will actually refer you to ASME section 5 for the entity methods and the ASME section 5 has about 10 articles no more than 10 and they actually describe all the entity methods for example radiography is in article 2 ultrasonic testing of welds is in article 4 and then you have MT, PT and VT in different articles. For the certification of the personnel, uh, they specify a minimum level 2 S SNTTC1A. For acceptance criteria, for section 8 is given in the appendices, appendix 8 for PT, appendix 12 for UT. For radiography, the acceptance criteria for the rounded indications is given in appendix 4 of section 8 but there is additional requirements pertaining to the planar flaws like lack of fusion and cracks and that's given in UW section UW 51 and UW 52. For power piping which is in the electric uh, power plants, power, uh, power stations, uh, the relevant code is ASME B31.1 and uh, I believe that's the latest right now. The extent of expansion, uh, inspection, the scope is given inside the code. You have to look for it. Again, it's a big, big code. And uh, the entity method, since it's an ASME code, it refers you to basically ASME section 5. What is ASME section 5? This is what it looks like. And uh, this is the ASME section 5 uh, boiler and pressure vessel code. You can read it. And its title is actually non-destructive examination section 5 and the year is 2021 and it's again it's a huge code you can see and there are all kinds of uh, entity methods are described here now one thing you have to understand is that section 5 only provides you with the entity methods it does not include the acceptance criteria again for the acceptance criteria you have to go back to the relevant code for piping power piping 311 for pressure vessels you have to go to section 8 for boilers you have to go to section 1 and so on and there is no acceptance criteria in ASME section 5 oh by the way just a small note 311 if you are doing UT it states in the new addition which is and in section 136.4.6 that all data shall be recorded you just can't cannot do just manual UT on the steam lines the high uh, high energy piping and uh, say that everything is okay so that's not acceptable inspection anymore for the offshore the most popular code or the most common code which is used in the industry is DNV OSF 101. The entity methods are actually given in Appendix D of this code or the standard. And uh, uh, since this is a European standard, uh, it, it refers to the ISO standards for the, uh, for the entity methods. For personal certification, it refers you to ISO 9712. It does allow level 2's SNTTC1A, but after review of the employer's written practice. Then for radiography, it refers you to ISO 17636-1, and these are for the different methods, and these are the ISO numbers given here. Again, this is just a brief introduction. You really have to dig into the standard to get all the codes, uh, all the references, which are given in this DNV OS F101 and other standards. Now, the last uh, slide is on a description of ASTM 3.03 and 3.04. So these are two volumes, they are huge volumes, and they actually describe various NDT methods. So it's not like ASME section five, which for PT, there is only one article here for PT there could be six seven article uh, sections so for example for PT 
there is a standard E-165 and that's for the general industry. Now that is just the visible PT but in the aerospace industry they really don't accept visible liquid penetrant testing and they use fluorescent PT and they also define the sensitivity level of the liquid penetrant testing which is not defined for the visible PT. So for fluorescent you can have different levels from half, one, two, three, four as the sensitivity level and when you're doing the aerospace inspection they might require you to do PT with a sensitivity level of three. So here this E1417 it defines the sensitivity level and then there's more detail if you're doing uh, other like uh, lipophilic emulsifier there is a separate Standard on that, if you're doing water washable fluorescent, it's 1209. And if it's a hydrophilic emulsifier, it's 1210. But they're all, you can see they're all fluorescent. So they're high sensitivity uh, liquid penetrant inspections. Here are the books actually, uh, just to give you an idea what they look like. Again, it used to be one book, 3.03. .03, and uh, it became so big that they really had to split it up into two volumes. This is 3.03 .03, and this is the 2018 edition and it's on you can see non-destructive testing right here non-destructive testing and uh, then then there is a 3.04 which is basically new now so all of this is now included in these uh, uh, ASTM standards one of the uh, UT standards in particular I would actually uh, give you tell you about it is called E 2375 which is uh, really a good standard and it came from the military standards 2154 so that's one good one to look at uh, because uh, again it depends on if it is referred by the by the code uh, and then you use that specific standard so basically you got a flavor of the codes and standards and don't get confused on what's the difference between code and standard. They basically overlap. In some countries, the word standard is more common and in some they use codes and standards, um, you know, separately. So I hope this presentation is useful. And for an NDT technician, it's really important to really be familiar with these codes and standards. You will not be able to remember. So you really need uh, some a copy of it or a PDF version. Thank you very much.